Hello everyone, Gabriel here, and today we are going to learn how to use the new grid cutter feature inside Chronoscan to capture this type of document here. As we can see, it has several little pieces here, and what we are going to do with the grid cutter is to separate each of those little pieces into a different document and then we are going to use the barcode reading to capture the barcode and the mark detection to detect whether we have a signature or not. So let's get inside Kernoscan. The first thing we are going to do in Kernoscan is to create a new job. Let's run the job wizard. I'm going to call it grid cutter job and then click on next. We are not going to use IntelliTag, we are going to use barcode reading. So I'll just click next. We have single image documents as a, our final product. So I just leave it as it is here. Even though we have a document with more than one page, we are going to split each record into a single document. So we are going to use single image documents here. That's the recommended setting for grid cutter jobs. We click on next. We have generic fields, we have the barcode reading, and we are going to have another field called signature. I will click on next here, next again, make sure everything is good, barcode reading, signature, that's perfect. I will just click on finish and create our first batch. I will call it grid cutter batch one, and then create batch. Now, we are ready to import our files. I will navigate to the Explorer and then just drag and drop. I will set the resolution to 300 and leave everything as it is. Extracting text is not really going to work because those files came straight out of the scanner. But I will just leave it on. As you can see, we have the barcodes already captured but we have many barcodes here. First thing is to enable the grid cutter. To do that, we have to go up here on the administration tab. We have to click on the job we want to set up and to add the grid cutter, and then click on configure job. Now down here on the image processing and reading, you can see we have the barcode reading already. We are going to add, click here on add, and then you can see the grid cutter here. We select it and then click OK. Now, we must select a document. That's why we imported the files already. I will click yes and select a page. Since on the first page we have the maximum number of little records, I will just select it as the page to set up things and then click OK. Now that's the most important window of the entire process. As you can see here, we have a red line, and that's the outline of the cut we are going to do on our document. And the green line is the inline that is telling us where Chronoscan will cut the documents. And those are automatic, those are detected automatically, but we have a few options here to add some of manual adjustment but usually you get a very good automatic reading here. The first thing we have to change, we can see here we have five rows. So we change the number of rows to five and you can see the green lines update. We have two columns, that's perfect. Now let's adjust the cut area. We use the header, the footer and the left and right margins. And you can see it is a percentage. It works almost like the barcode read area. By increasing the value, you are telling Chronoscan to cut that percentage of the top or whatever it is here. Let's start with the header here. We have 5%. Let's go to 10 and see how it looks like. Still not enough. Let's jump to 15. And it is too much. So we decrease it a little bit. Still not there. Let's do decimal values and there we go. 13.5 is perfect. Although you might not want to do such tight adjustments because your documents may move from one page to the other. Now 
you can see the green lines are already looking very good. Let's adjust our left and right margins. Let's start with the right, do five here, maybe five and a half, and that's perfect. Now for the left one, starting with five here, that's too much, 4.5, perfect. Now that we have everything set up here, we can use those options here, but we don't really need them. So just leave them as it is and then click OK. Now that the grid cutter is added to the job configuration, we have to click on save job and then we can close it and go back to the scan input tab. Now here, let's open again the grid cutter batch. And the first thing we're going to do is select everything and remove. And then we have to re-import everything to see the grid cutter at work. After importing, you can see we already have some separated documents. That's perfect for us. But we also have some blank pages here. And what we are going to do is to set up blank page detection. Let's go up here on the documents and image input section and then on the input options we want to click on the blank page detection to activate it here we have the option to select the file and chronoscan will automatically set the value the file size of the file we just selected now i will use the same for all of those color schemes let's click here and let's take a look at our blank pages here as you can see we have blank pages that have a little line up here and that will play a very big role on the file size. So instead of choosing a perfectly blank page, I will choose the page with the black line up here. If I can find it again. Okay, there we go. That What that's going to do, you can see here the size is 17K. So what I'm going to do is increase it to 18K. And now just to show you what happened would happen is if I select a perfectly white image and click OK, you can see the size is much smaller. So to make sure we get the desired action, I would just select the same size here, the size of the pages where we have that little black line up here. That's also true when we have noise on our documents, when usually we have low quality documents with a lot of noise on the page. We want to make sure you have the right size here. Now on the actions, I don't want to start or end a document. I just want to do nothing. And then I want to delete the page. And now I click OK. The blank page detection is activated. And now once again, I have to remove everything. And now I'm ready to import the entire batch. I'll click OK again and we wait a little bit and you can see no blank pages. 22 is the correct number of documents. So we are not eliminating pages with information we want to capture. And that's perfect. We can see already the barcodes are being read here on the grid view. We can see all the barcodes here. Even the smaller one, smaller ones. Now let's take a look at the signature. We can see we have that dash here for no signature. And then we have the signatures where we have signatures. So let's set that up. I will open that first document. And don't forget to select the signature field here. And now let's do the OCR zone on the signature field. I'll make sure I have a very generous area here. And now let's click on the read settings button to set up the mark detection. I will click here and you can see it's reading 059. So if I set to 0 0.6, the threshold, and I'm going to use threshold here, it is set to false. Everything that's bigger than the threshold will be no signature. So that's what I'm going to do here. I will just make sure I turn off adjust again 
and let's leave it as it is and take a look at the other signatures. I'll just click OK and you can see it is false already and let's move to the next document. And let's do some three or four documents just to make sure we have the correct area. We can also see that it is moving. So I will get back here, look for something that will repeat that little bit of text or even the text down here. So just move it and here you go. I will use it as a, a anchor and now let's keep going. Now it's a much better movement of the area. It is perfectly fine. And the threshold actually works. Minus uh, 0 0.6. That's true. We get a signature here. Let's see the next document. False. Perfect. So we seem to be getting very reliable results. So let's just select everything and process all the selection. We can use the default options. That's perfect for us. And then I click OK. Let's see how the reading goes. And then we will be ready to export. We have the type of action. That's perfect. Let's take a look at some of those results. That's true, but that's not a signature here. So we need to change the threshold. And that's how you do it. That's 0.63. I might want 0 0.65. There you go. Now we have to reprocess everything and a couple more times to make sure we have the threshold at the right level. So we can finally export our documents. Let's take a look at this one here. Okay. True. True. So that's perfect. I believe we have not yet. Okay. Let's take a look here. Let's increase a little bit. 88. That might make problems for us. Let me try make 89. Let's see how all the results go. False here. Yeah, no signature. Let's take a look here. Okay, so we have a little problem there with that kind of long slash. So let's just decrease here. That should do true. And we will have to, to work with that kind of values here. I will just select everything once again, process selection. And then we have very accurate results. Set to true, true. Let's take a look here, true, false. So that's perfect. Let's see that long slash. You can see it is set to true because it is a very long drawing. We might also get better results by using the entities count, but that's not the point of that video. Let's see. It reads 30 here, but we will run into the same type of trouble if we do entities because that slash, that, that slash is very big. So it will have a bigger threshold that is similar to when you have a signature. Now we just click on export and export our batch in any desirable formats and destination we like. So that's it guys. I hope you liked it and I will see you on the next tutorial. Bye bye.